Hey folks, it's Chris with the Human Project Podcast. In this episode, we're gonna talk about this idea and concept of quiet time. It's a phrase we use a lot as Christians, and I would venture to say that the way that we use it is diluted a lot of its purpose and its intentionality and its why. In this episode, Mark and I are gonna explore what's the purpose of a quiet time, why make space for that, what are some practical ways that we can do that, and how do we communicate this and talk about this in community and with people that may not know what this is. So take a listen, let us know what you think. Hello, Mark. Hey, Chris. How's it going? It's a pretty quiet day. Nice. Yeah. Uh, how about you? That's uh, pretty peaceful. Yeah. Nice. Pretty enjoyable. Good. Yeah. I think we try way too hard. We definitely place. try way too hard. <laughs> it used to be so natural. We're just like, ah. some of it we just grip the wheel and don't even try that hard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so continuing our Christianese phrases, there's this weird one that I think is at a point where it's stopped meaning anything. Hmm. And it's this phrase of quiet time. And I think you ask 20 different people what they mean when they say quiet time, you're going to get 20 different answers. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about what that means. Like when we use that with people outside of Christian circles and what we mean when we use that in community, what it actually is. And I'd also like to talk about like, what are some good practices or things to do in quiet time? So kind of talking about our Christianese phrases, but then also giving some practical things Yeah, beyond just the phrase itself. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So quiet time, what comes to your mind when you hear a quiet time? QT. <laughs> QT? Oh, shucks, buddy. <laughs> Not you. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, it's uh, time with God, Bible study, prayer, those types of things, uh, daily type of um, pattern or ritual. If I use that word intentionally to be a little mm -hmm. inflammatory. Yeah. Um, that uh, that we'd want to have as a, a, a habit in our lives. Okay. Yeah. I think my my take on it, my gut reaction on it's pretty similar. It's uh, I know growing up, it was like do this, do this, do this, mm -hmm. do this, do this daily, 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 same time and place, same time and yeah. place, daily, yeah. daily, daily, and it became very much like a, just a, a checklist type thing, a practice that was something yeah. you did, right. And I didn't actually fully understand the weight of like why it is so valuable. As I've mentioned before on here, Jeremiah 15, 16, hmm. your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart for mm. I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. That was just an enlightening passage for me in soul care is where yeah. I got that verse. Adam, thank you for recommending that verse to me. But like, I just, I weeped the first time I saw that because it's talking about like, I think I've tend to always approach quiet time as a duty mm -hmm. and not as a joy and a delight. Like those yeah. are the two words that stick out to me the right. most in there. It's like, God wants to communicate with me. And I don't think we tend mm -hmm. to view quiet times like that most of the time. Right. So just the general phrase I think has uh, this connotation of duty Obligation. more so than delight. Yeah. yeah. Obligation is a great word for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that it's tough because there is a, it is a good habit. Yeah. yeah. Even if we put it in that light right there, it is a good, excellent, godly habit for us to be receiving from God with joy. Yeah. Rejoicing in what he, what he has for us and make it a daily, daily pattern of us doing that. That is good. And it's so easy for that to just become a checklist, uh, something that we have to do every day. Yeah, here I think is the difference in how we use it versus where it's really helpful. Mm. I think we tend to approach it as the what and not the why. Mm. That is, that is I think, my big take on this one. Okay. Is it's not just about the what, it's about the why. Just like uh, in order to be healthy, we need to eat every day. Same thing here, like mm. he's referencing your words were found and I ate them. Mm. Like we need to be consuming and connecting and working with God every single day. Yeah. And it's not a legalistic approach. It's not a, oh, I didn't do it today, so there is there is shame. It is a, I did myself a disservice by not spending time with God today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't think we tend to approach it that way, at least at least me growing up. I'm, right. I'm hoping that you listening have a very different experience and that you have freedom mm. in that and that it is a joy, that it is a delight. But I want to just invite us to that 
Yeah. When we think quiet time, it's not about the ritual. It's not about the checklist. It's not about the, the do it just for the sake of doing it. Crossed off my list, move on with my day. Like that is the habit of how am I connecting with God? Mm-hmm. And not just like, I think a, there's practices that help make it easy to repeat, which is having at the same time, the same place, like having a dedicated spot for it. Um, but I think it is more so not just a 15 minutes in a day. It is a pattern all throughout of how am I connecting with God? How am I praying without ceasing? Mm -hmm. How am I spending time thinking about what God has done? How am I being shoulder to shoulder with him, connecting with him throughout the day as I'm working, checking with him, God, is that what you wanted me to do? What's the next right thing? Like all of these are good practices and habits to get into Mm -hmm. that I think like starting and setting aside that time is a great training wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I would absolutely echo and emphasize that to the point of saying, if you're not in that regular habit, find the training wheels that help you start the habit, right? There's plenty of good ways to build habits. So go reference some of Mm -hmm. those. James Clear, Atomic Habits. Exactly. Uh, Thank you for the book reference. (laughs) I had to. You knew I had to. It was a button I pushed so that you could say that. (laughs) James Clear, Atomic Habits. I don't know why I sounded like a parrot. (laughs) You don't don't push a button on a parrot. (laughs) Here's a cracker. (laughs) But um, use the training wheels. They are not inherently bad or good they're just training wheels right and there's a number of them i'll reference for example uh, the pray acronym praise repent ask and yield Mm. these are all good things to be talking to god about and a pretty good order to do it in as well um that's not it's not good or bad it just is and it can help us get into these habits of talking to god about certain things and yet we do are not created for the purpose of using the pray acronym, right? That's, right. that's not it. Right. That's not the thing. And so it's it's difficult to know how to handle those things because they're not bad. They're not good. We want to use them in order to the higher purpose, like I think yep. you were talking about there. Like, why are we doing this? The way I would put that is this, this is relational. Yeah. This is relationships. So uh, something I've learned from Jamie, uh, Pastor Jamie at Marymount is just use uh, you know close relationships, human relationships, and see, would that work with that? If that's not going to work, mm. why would we expect that would work with God? So with my wife, Christine, would it work that I say, okay, it's our 15 minutes. So here's my list, right? This is where we're going to relate today. And I just do the, you know, thank you for doing this. And I make requests of her, right? If I go down the list and I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. And then I'm off and that's going to work for today. Right. Uh, no, no. <laughs> that's not how that's going to work today. Yeah. Um, and the way that I've heard him say it, that really encapsulate that is if we're doing these things for God, Mm. we're missing the point. We're missing the richness. We want to do them with God. It's silly little preposition change. Yeah. But a very, very important preposition. Right. Yeah. Cause it's talking about the motivation. Yeah. Motivation is connecting, drawing into. So I think that's a great way of looking at it, uh, internally. So great practices, great habits for a larger purpose. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about what does it look like outside Christian circles? Because I think there is this uh, growing concept because good things that are biblical tend to get repurposed and Mm -hmm. reused. So things like, oh, I need to have my my rest or my peace or my time in nature or my morning affirmations or Mm -hmm. any of that stuff. And I think quiet time, a lot of times when we bring that up with people, that's kind of the Mm -hmm. Uh, mindset that it it takes on Hmm. if they're not in the Christian circles or not having grown up using that phrase is it means something different. So would it be worth replacing that saying something weird, like my time with God, Hmm. they'd be like, Whoa, crazy, but we are crazy. (laughs) Turns out. Yeah, we are crazy. I just realized quiet time. I've not heard it thought of that way or reflected back that way with Hmm. people I've been talking to. I have you know, seen it be misunderstood, certainly. But I think the most common one that I hear is people think we're talking about like time out for our kids or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's time for a quiet time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a punishment. <laughs> right. Yeah, quiet time is not a yeah. punishment for ourselves no. at all. It is oh, a delight goodness. and a joy and yeah. what we were created for. We get to spend time with our daddy. Yeah. It's a good thing. And so I think outside of people in Christian circles, I, I think whatever phrase you can use to help them be mm-hmm. curious about that, like, yes, I spend time thanking God every day. Mm-hmm. 
I spend time praising him. I spend time making petitions of him. I spend time reflecting and saying, God, I need your help to change this. And God, I surrender to you. I yield to you. I love that, that pray acronym. That's, I think, really helpful. But the goal is connection, helping yeah. people see that we are connected, especially when we talk about the religion relationship dynamic. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really helpful thing for people that we have a good relationship with to show them an opportunity of what this is all about. Yeah. And let them see the joy that it causes. Right. And not just the duty. Oh, I didn't have my quiet time this morning. So blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. So the more that I've been doing this over my, my walking with God, the more I start to understand quotes like Martin Luther's where he says, I have so much to do today. I need to spend the first several hours in prayer <laughs> where that's, <laughs> that's illogical. Okay. That is crazy. And yet I also sense that a bit when I have a lot of stuff going on today, I go, I need I need my heavenly father's perspective on all this stuff, or I know what I'm going to look like at the end of the day. I need to align with him. I need to receive from him and soak in him and, and really hear from him today. And so it's even more important on the days when I have so much going on that I connect with him, that I have that time. Yeah. Yeah. And if that sounds scary, if that sounds daunting to you, just start small. Yeah. Not three hours. Right. Right. <laughs> That would be lovely though. Like that, that's such, I love Martin Luther because he has such shocker quotes mm. like that. Like, cause we, we think like that, that time is not productive mm -hmm. when in reality, like it's just our skewed prioritization of how we view our day. Yeah. Like if we truly believe what Jeremiah 15, 16 is saying, like that is, that is the thing that is our reason for existence. Mm -hmm. And it may seem lazy, and I think that's the, the fear that we fall into is it mm. may seem lazy. Like even Jesus went out and rested and spent time. And like, I'd be curious to like total up the amount of time he spent with what is recorded of like his miracles and stuff versus yeah. what's not recorded. What was he doing in that other time? I'm, I'm assuming a lot more of the same because it's referenced. If I was to record all of the miracles, it would fill tons and tons of things. Um, you wish Matthew had access to Microsoft Excel and he could fill out a spreadsheet for yeah. you. Is that what you're saying? He's a good, a good recorder, but I think that's right. not quite possible. <laughs> I think uh, the way Matthew is depicted in The Chosen, if he had Microsoft Excel, He'd be oh my goodness, <laughs> he would he would love that. Absolutely. Yeah, macros that. and all sorts of stuff going on. <laughs> Do VLOOKUPS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to this type of miracle. <laughs> well, that is off off track. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> But I, I wonder how much of that time Jesus was spending resting and spending time praying and spending time mm -hmm. just being with God. Yeah. Um, and what a perfect model for us. Mm -hmm. Like even up to before his public ministry started, what was he doing in that time? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's freeing to think about like, we were created for this. This is good for us. The phrasing, how we repurpose it. Mm -hmm. That I think this is one that I'm not too picky about. Yeah but how I rephrase it. It's more getting yourself into the habit and accomplishing the why more so than the what. Yeah. So thanks for exploring that with yeah. me, my friend. Good exploration. Ooh. Need to go have a quiet time. Excuse me. There you go. Let's go. <laughs>